Hi, this is John with The Evolving World. Today I'm doing a video on how to adjust the front alignment on a Chevrolet Bolt EV. So one of the first things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make sure that the rear alignment is in spec first. So I've done another video about how to do that. So go ahead and check that out. So once we know that the rear suspension is in tune, now we can focus on the front. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check the camber. The first thing you want to do is make sure you're parked on a nice, smooth, flat surface. Now, a lot of times garage floors appear to be smooth and flat, but that's not necessarily true. So I've just done a little check here with my level, and I found out that this is actually sloping a slight amount, 5 eighths of an inch over 5 foot 6. So it's a little bit under an eighth of an inch per foot. So it's something that we'll take into account. And here's the tools we're going to be using to take our measurements. All you need is a two foot level, a block with some string on it, and a ruler. So something like this I find works really, really well. Something that's really precise. This one has metric as well as inches. So in order to check the camper, what we're going to do is we're going to take our two foot level and we're going to go ahead and place it up against the tire like so. Make sure it's pretty much vertical, but also make sure that you don't have any interference. Now this, these particular wheels are aftermarket wheels and they have kind of protrusions right here. So you want to try to avoid that. We don't want to hit the wheel. We want to be hitting right on the tire. And another place that you can take the measurement is directly from the rim of the wheel to the rim of the wheel. That would be even more accurate. But what we're going to do here is that we have a because there's a little bit of a tire bulge usually at the bottom there. So we're going to, but what we're going to do here is we're going to just simply compensate for that. Have, take a couple millimeters off of, of the top there and that's going to get us a, an accurate enough reading. So it looks like we're at about 8 millimeters or so center, but then we want to add a couple millimeters for the bulge in the bottom there. So that gets us about to about 10 millimeters or so. Looks like we're right about accurate right there. So that's our that's our number for the left front. Let's go ahead and do the right front next. And now we're on the right front part of the car. We've got a measurement here of about, looks like about 20 millimeters. So what does that number mean? Well, what we've done is we've done the calculations here. So from this outermost part of the tire, the bottom to the uppermost, outermost part of the tire up here, we measured that distance, it's 20.5 inches. And then we know that that distance coming out on this side was 10 millimeters. So what we've done is we've simply used those two numbers. We've drawn a line down on CAD and that's pretty much got us our, our degree. So what it ends up being on the left front here on this particular car is it's negative 1.1 degrees. And then of course on the other side it was twice the number. So it was 10 millimeters on this side, 20 millimeters on the other side. So that ends up being negative 2.2 degrees. So on this particular car, specifications are anything between 0.2 degrees positive to negative 1.3 degrees. So on this side of the car, this particular car, we're just barely within spec on the left front. And then on the right front, we're almost a whole degree out. This is the one that's out negative 2.2. So what we want to do here is we want to optimize this one get it about negative 0.5 or so would be optimal. So this one's going to have to be adjusted quite a bit here. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. First step is to go ahead and loosen up the lug nuts where the car is still down on the ground. Use a breaker bar and a 19 millimeter socket, preferably in a star pattern for removal. So now you're going to want to lift up the car. You're going to need two floor jacks. There's no center point in the front of the car, so you have to get it from both sides. It's pretty obvious where it is. It's right here. You can see how very clear a lifting point right there. So you use your two jacks, you lift up the car, and then once you get it lifted up, you support it on some floor jacks here. Anywhere along the frame of the car here is fine. From GM, this is a non-adjustable suspension other than tow, which is your tow adjustment is right here, and that changes the, the tow position. But that's the only adjustment that's available on the car from the factory. Otherwise, you have to look to the aftermarket, although these are commonly available. This is a very common type of suspension, a McPherson strut suspension. These are very common amongst many, many cars. So it's been proven over time that you can go ahead and use this particular system. So this is a camber bolt right here. 
And what this allows us to do is it gives us about a, a 1.75 degree plus or a negative 1.75 degree adjustment. So basically it gives us a pretty nice range here. So since we're dealing with a car that's out negative 0.2, 2.2, even at full, even at the most, we're going to be able to adjust that only 1.75. So that should get us at max. We should be able to get it down to about 0.5 or so, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, which is right about optimal. So that's going to make it real easy to adjust since we're just simply going to put this at full, at full positive. So anyway, this is the uh, product I'm using. It's a very common suspension part company they make uh, high quality parts and uh, people don't have any problems with these they are used commonly available everywhere so first thing we want to do here is I've, I've went ahead and marked our with a red marker there as you can see maybe I marked the outline of the suspension where it is now when we move when we remove this bolt we're going to be pushing this out anyway so that red mark should increase we should see a gap there so we removed the nut pretty easily. That came right out. Actually, I don't think that was even in there 80 foot-pounds. It's supposed to be in there 118, but it felt more like about 75 or 80. Um, so that came right out. But what happened afterwards is that this whole, this, this bolt that's in here, I've loosened it up now, but it was tucked in there really, really tight. I ended up hammering on it. Nothing happened. I tried twisting it. Nothing happened. I couldn't get it out. And then, so then I, then I just kind of started tapping it from below here a little bit and tapping it from the sides a little bit and then that kind of freed it up finally and I was able to pop it right out and so the reason why it doesn't twist is it's blind it's a special kind of bolt I haven't seen this type before where it has splines on it so that's what keeps it from twisting you can't twist it you can't turn this thing at all so I, don't, I can't tell if it's bent or not it, it might be slightly I don't know but I thought that was the, the culprit there is why this car is out of alignment potentially if we have bent parts right here. I can't really tell if that's bent or not. I don't know. So this is how this thing works is that since it has this bump on it right here, what it allows us to do is it allows it to slide in to the same position. But because there's it's set back from the from the actual shaft right here. This little bump right here is what allows the whole thing to shift over. So once, you, so even though it looks like it's the same size, well, what does that accomplish? It doesn't really accomplish anything. It goes right in, right? No big deal. But because there's that bump right there, once you push it in, now you can take a pry bar and then push it out. Let me go ahead and do it right now. Oh yeah. Also, you want to loosen the the lower bolt too before you do this. This allows it to do this deal right here. So now we've just moved it out a little bit. And now we can just simply bolt it. And then how it sits in there is it's offset now. And that's what's so now our, our gap changed right there. So you can or cannot use the washer. I think the washer actually helps with help centering it. So we'll go ahead and put that back in. We're gonna have to twist this to get this out. So we have our bolt loosely in place. I'm using the pry bar here to make sure that that stays put. Because next thing we want to do is we want to torque these down. The easiest one to do would be the bottom one here. Because it has that splined end to it. So it's going to make it real easy. You don't have to brace the other one. You just have to tighten one at a time here. So basically this one right here. Let's tighten that down to 118 foot-pounds. That will give us about half the pressure to hold it in place. And then we'll come up here and tighten this other one to 100 foot-pounds. But we are going to have to hold this one and do this at the same time. And here's what it looks like after the bolts have been tightened. You can double, triple check, make sure everything looks good with our alignment. Looks like our, our bolt has held the position in the offset position there, as you can see. So, that looks like that's pretty much done. Also make sure that that plus is pointing outwards, which it is, for maximum camber. Something was looking a little fishy here, so I went ahead and lowered it back down onto the ground. And, um... Let the car settle a bit. I also turned the car on and, and turned the steering wheel a few rotations back and forth just to make, it, make, it, make sure everything was settled. And that makes a difference here. But even after doing that, I double checked the left side. The left side's back to where it was when we first took our reading. 
but the right side looks a little weird. So, not exactly sure how this happened because everything is based off of, of the information that I have about the camera bolts being a certain range of motion that they're able to to move at. There's, they're, you know, they're only able to change the camera a certain degree, but apparently it's, it's doing a lot more than that because we have positive camera now. So we've overcorrected this thing. So if nothing else, we've learned something about this particular car. We learned that these MOG camber bolts adjust the, the suspension as much as 2.5 degrees. So that's the real range of motion here. So we've learned that much. So now what I've done is I've marked right here. You can see the little green line. The red line was the original and then the green is where we're at now. So what we want to do is we're going to loosen up the top one. And then we want to loosen up the bottom one a little bit, but not too much. And then we're going to basically tap in here a little bit until that green line goes away or at least partially goes away. Okay, so I kind of like in these camera bolts as you kind of get used to them, you, you realize that once you position the bolt, whether it's fore or aft here, that gets you about a degree just from just from being a smaller bolt. And then from there, you, you find you use a couple wrenches and you fine tune it by having that, that lump and you just kind of adjust it either in or out here. And so you can tell so it has a nice uh, nice range of motion here. So I'm finding that by backing it off a little bit here, since we overdid it, I'm finding that just turning it back about a quarter turn now seems to get us where we want to be here. So I mean, I put a little green mark right here, and now that most of that mark is gone, but it's still not to where it was before. So we're kind of at about the halfway point, which I think is where we want to be because we want to be right at about negative 0.5, maybe negative one, something in that range. So after making the adjustment, you want to go ahead and just turn the steering wheel. I would do this at least three or four times, go from lock to lock. And that's basically just to let it all settle. And then you can also kind of sit on the suspension on the front curb with a bumper a little bit. And uh, it's just kind of rock it up and down, you know, push on the suspension a little bit. Just, just took the measurement here. Our gap is now 10 millimeters at the top which is identical to the left side. So we're basically equaled out now. So they're both, both sides are negative 1.1 degrees. So that's a pretty ideal arrangement. Um, I do notice one thing right here. When we, when we did these camber bolts and we pushed out the, the, uh, the, the hub assembly, the hub and the uh, spindle assembly down here, we pushed it out. Um, in relationship to where the toe adjustment is, which is on the back here, it's by pushing that out, it seems to have knocked our toe out of alignment on this side. So now we're ready to go ahead and check our toe. So what you want to do is you want to put your blocking and your string in the back here behind the rear wheel. You also want to make sure that your steering wheel is in your typical position, which in this car it's pretty much straight and true. However it goes down the road, typically that's what you want the steering wheel position to be at. Sometimes it'll be slightly crooked, so if, it is, if that's the normal, then you want to make sure it's the same. And then all you have to do now is grab your string here. Oh, also, I would also like to mention that um, this car has a 59-inch track front and rear, so it makes the string uh, alignment relatively effective. Now, on cars that don't have the same set up some cars have have a wider track in the front or in the back so meaning that it would be wider that would throw this whole thing off it wouldn't work at all but on this car because it's equal equal we're able to do the string alignment and it's actually pretty precise surprisingly it's amazing six inches in the back there so you want to do about the same here and then once you make sure you have all these things tucked down here you can put your knee on here on the string you want to pull on the string, but don't pull too tight, because if you pull too tight, you might move your shift or blocking in the back, so you don't want to do that. But then once you pull your, your string nice and true here, we're ready to take a measurement. It looks pretty close here. I don't know if I can get in there with the camera. But it looks like it's about a millimeter gap there, so we're pretty close. So we're slightly toe out, or toe negative. Um... On this particular car, the spec calls for negative 0.2 degrees to positive 0.2 degrees. But ideally, you'd really want to be at zero. Now we're on the right side. The 
procedure is basically the same. Now we know going in that this one is out. We have some serious negative toe happening here. But if nothing else, we're going to show this and confirm how the string shows this. And it's going to tell us how much it's out as well. So basically line your string up, brace it down here. And there, I don't know if this shows up or not, but you can see right there we've got some pretty massive amount of gap right there. It looks like about seven maybe or eight, possibly eight. Seven or eight millimeters right there, so that's pretty massive. To gain access, all you have to do is turn the steering wheel all the way to the left. That gives us enough room to work with right here. You won't have to lift up the car, you won't have to do anything else, you just have to do that. We should be able to get in here and reach everything. So we need a crescent wrench. We're going to need a 19 millimeter or a three quarter will suffice. It's close enough. And then a 13 millimeter. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and loosen up our lock nut. Okay, next step is to go ahead and put some markings on your tie rod end and your tie rod. I've put a red mark right there on the tie rod end and I did a piece of green tape on the tie rod with a black mark on it so those those are pretty much lined up and that's a baseline for where we're at then you want to go ahead and loosen up the lock nut right there in the middle that's been done already now we're ready to use our 13 millimeter wrench and we're going to attach it to our tie rod and we're going to turn this a full revolution just for simplicity's sake and then we'll go ahead and um, retest everything out here and see what that gets us and then we'll make adjustments accordingly now we're ready to take another measurement here this is looking, visually it's looking a lot better. So let's see what we got here. So that's one full revolution. Oh yeah, that, that, that closed the gap quite a bit there. Uh, we've still got, looks like, we've still got, looks like about, maybe three millimeters or so okay so we turned it about a half a revolution as I felt that that was getting pretty close to to getting it zeroed out here so let's see what we got here let's see here make sure it's not touching the rim here well that looks to be pretty close right there Wow, really close. Yeah, that looks like we're pretty much there. I mean, you want to make sure that the string's touching at all four spots, but not with any pressure on it. That looks like we're pretty much right there. You can see that that's pretty much ideally what it wanted to look like. You want to be able to pull, if you pull the string out a millimeter, then this should move a millimeter as well. See, it's pretty much right on it. So with the right side being zeroed out, I want to, before I tighten it down, before I do anything else, I'm going to come back on the left side and just verify and make sure that this side is looking good too because sometimes things can shift a little bit. You know, the steering wheel might not be exactly at the same spot as it was before, so things like that. So yeah, this is looking pretty good. I don't know if this shows up here or not. It looks like we're almost touching right here. It looks like we're at maybe at a millimeter. So we turned it one sixth of a, of a turn. And uh, I think that should get it pretty close here. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. Nice. So that's about what you want right there. That looks like it's, that's right on it. That's about as close to zero as you're gonna get right there. So that's looking perfect. So let's go ahead and tighten that up. Lastly, you're going to want to check your lug nuts. Make sure that they're tightened down to per spec. It's 103 foot-pounds is what you want to go for. Do it in a star pattern. And once that's done, pretty much just go ahead and take it out for a drive and see how it drives. I guarantee it's going to drive a lot better than it did before. You should have a pretty much a near-perfect alignment. So, anyway... That's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you did. Many more videos to come.